Chris Schulte. Um, thanks to Emily for inviting me here to sit and sew with all y'all. Um, originally from Detroit, but picked up the all y'all while I was here. Can't <laughs> help it. Um, today I'm going to show you how to put together this lovely kit. Yes, it was designed by moi for the Row by Row a couple of years ago. Um, and the theme of the Row by Row was food and drink. And because we like to highlight the Liberty prints, I mean, you know, you think Liberty and England and tea and crumpets and cake. So here you go, a cake. And, you know, this would be great in a quilt, of course, but how fun would it be to receive a little wall hanging for your birthday? Or you just make the wall hanging and hang it up when it's somebody's birthday in your house. It would be just a fun little festive thing to have. And it's relatively um, straightforward to put together. And that's what I'd like to show you. So, if you should be so lucky, lucky to receive one of these kits in the mail, it comes with everything you need, including the instructions to make the wall hanging. Well, you can turn it into whatever you want. You could even order 15 of these and make a quilt. And how else could you get all this great Liberty fabric? Okay. All right, so the first thing to do, I'm gonna open this one. Is look what we have. Oh, look, they even included the floss. Um, so we have our little gingham for the tablecloth and we have our applique fabrics. More tablecloth. The pedestal. Don't you love the lace? just kind of really looks like a cake platter, doesn't it? I think that was Emily's idea. Um, and then we have our Liberty. And the pattern. Okay. I'm going to show you a little bit of how to cut. Um, and if you notice when you get your kit, there are two different chambray fabrics. One's a little darker. I don't know if it shows on the camera, but one's a little darker than the other. If you have one piece of chambray fabric, then if you look at each side, the, um, the back side of the fabric is a different shade than the right side of the fabric. And I thought it would just give it a nice effect of like wallpaper. It's just a subtle, subtle little detail that um, by using the right and wrong side of fabric or too very subtle. So in the instructions, it tells you um, background fabric one and background fabric two. So if you have the same piece of fabric, the right, si the right side would be fabric one, the wrong side would be fabric two. But here we have two. So what I'm gonna do Give it a little convincing to get the crease. Wouldn't it be wouldn't it be nice if we could all get rid of our wrinkles this easy? <laughs> no Botox here, just a little iron. Now I tell my students all the time, one of my biggest pet peeves is when you try to cut fabric accurately with a dull blade. I know blades are expensive, but ante it up, people buy blades. A nice sharp blade will help your accuracy tremendously. I really, of course, I like the most expensive kind, but the Endurance Blades by Ulfa, you can cut up several layers like butter. You know, they always say um, measure twice, cut once, right? Because you don't want to make mistakes with kits. So what I did is I lined up the folds up here at the top of my ruler with a flat hand and some pressure. 
remember these blades are really sharp so you don't want to cut anything but the fabric and you're going to clean off your edge so now my edge is nice and straight and I know from my instructions that I'm going to be cutting two and a half inch strips because most of the pieces are cut two and a half inches wide so I'm going to measure I'm going to make two two and a half inch cuts so that would be five inches I'm going to put the five inch line right here on the ruler flat hand and make my cut I have all of my pieces cut and laid out and I simply just cut the way the pattern tells you to cut them. I do want to share with you because I like to I like to highlight my blunders. I did cut one of the pieces a little bit wrong and I did not panic. I just pieced two little pieces together and what I'm going to do, and I'm sure no one will tell anybody, I'll just hide the seam underneath one of my appliques. But the point is, uh, don't freak out if you make a little cutting mistake. You can always be creative and that's the glory of um, piecing when you're the driver. So anyway, I followed the instructions. I cut out the table, the table, cute little checkered tablecloth. And here I have the cake in the background. Now, since I set up my machine here, um, I love to use these purple strips. They're quarter inch guides. I highly recommend them, especially if you're kind of um, new at all of this. And I'm, I know my quarter inch line on my machine is right there. So I'm gonna put my little strip down and I'm gonna line it up here on the quarter inch line on my, on my tray. If I didn't have the lines on my tray, I would sink the needle line up the quarter inch, and then make sure it's, it's square. Anytime, even though I've done this for years and years and years, anytime I set up a new strip on my machine, I like to run a sample. So I've cut one and a half inch strips out of some scrap fabric. And I do this every time. I don't assume that my quarter inch is accurate until I've tested it. And so using my quarter inch foot on my machine, and I like to use a two millimeter stitch length. I'm gonna sew these two pieces together with my quarter inch seam. And I am in the habit of cleaning off my threads immediately. Then I'm gonna press it. Okay, and now I'm going to put the third piece on. Lining up. And what's nice about this purple strip is that you can kind of butt your fabric up to it. It's kind of like a roadblock. So I've done this, I'm gonna press this guy. All right, and since I have three one and a half inch strips I put together, we're gonna hope that this is three and a half inches wide. And I highly recommend that everybody do this. And I'm just shy of three and a half inches. So I know my seam is a little bit too big. I will adjust it a little bit. I will run another sample and then we'll get started. Okay, so I'm confident that my quarter inch seam is, is ready to go. And I'm gonna start piecing my um, tablecloth and as you can see over here um, that I have it all laid out right here and then I will piece 
I will piece it by rows and then I put all the rows together and I'll show you how I do that. I started here by doing one, uh, just a little corner piece. Um, so I will carry on. And now as I go, I am going to press my seams towards the gingham. And one trick um, when you have a triangle and you're piecing it towards the square, a lot of times if you just try to place it, you'll do it haphazardly and it won't be centered. So what I like to do is find the center of my square. Anytime I'm putting a triangle to a square, I will find the center by doing a little press. You might not be able to see it on this on the screen, but I can see that um, finger pressing that I've done. And then you put the tip of the triangle to the pressed mark, line it up here, and now I know it's centered. And one thing I like to do, I know, you know, it's kind of confusing when they say use a scant quarter inch, and you think, why not just use a regular quarter inch? But I find anything that I piece on point, it it benefits me to use a scant quarter of an inch for some reason. And I find that that's the case with this. So I'm going to use a, a scant quarter of an inch. Hence, you can see the little gap between my... This is one of the exceptions. Normally when I'm just straight piecing, I just you know use a regular quarter inch. And I like to keep things nice and tidy. So I'll just cut off these little ears. And I'm gonna to press towards the gingham. That might seem kind of awkward, but, and I'll just finger press here. And now I will carry on. And uh, for some of you um, that are maybe new to this, you hear us use terms like chain piecing chain piecing is just when you feed the feed the pieces in one after another save some thread actually I find the tension is a little bit better so what I'm going to do is chain piece a bunch of these gingham and solid tablecloth squares I'm just going to run them through one after another again keeping a close eye on my quarter inch seam I like to do everything like cookie cutter. Well, and considering with, you know, COVID and everything, we can't go celebrate birthdays like we used to. So I suggest you take some special people in your life and make them a birthday banner. And actually, I think I'll do what I preach. I have a couple of birthdays coming up. And who doesn't like liberty, right? I mean, we see the beautiful fabric. We want to eat it anyway. Okay. And if this is your first time using liberty in a quilt setting, let me just tell you that if you ever decide to splurge and make a whole entire quilt out of liberty, it is one of the most heavenly things you'll ever feel. Uh, it's like spun from the gods. And if you should take the plunge and make a liberty quilt, I suggest that you use two layers of thin cotton batting with no scrim. Um, the extra layer of batting pushes it over the edge. Now that I've got those chain pieced, and again, remember, we're gonna press them all towards the gingham. And here we go. I like to just give it a finger press. And what I'm gonna do is I'd love to show you a row or two. 
Now that I have all of these pieced, I'm just going to set them aside for a sec. And my next piece, I'm going to put together a, a triangle to a square. This one's a little different. Um, this is the corner piece here. This is the um, set-in triangle. So you match up the corners. towards the gingham and then I'm going to put these two together and you can get a system going with um, with all of your pieces if you know if you can chain pieces as many together as you can if I were just sewing in my room I would probably have a process towards the gingham. Now I have this little row done. And here I have my top corner. And now the reason why I pressed all towards the gingham fabric is so that our seams all nestle. So what I'll do is I'm literally feeling with my finger that um, the, the, the seams kind of lock together ensuring this is straight. Um, some people like to pin. I'm not a big pinner. I just take it as it comes. Also notice that this intersection right here is right where the quarter inch should be. And that's where your needle will first catch. Okay, so I'm gonna just make sure Again, I'm using a little bit of a scant of a quarter inch. I always kind of stop and I'm going to feel, I'm going to, I can feel these seams lock together. And then driving off, I will hit this intersection as well. And that's how you know you should be kind of on track. All right, and let's see how he did. Ta-da! You get these really nice points from nestling your seams. And I'll give it a press. So I press my unit. I'm you know happy I see my points match. You know, honestly, perfection is overrated. But one thing I really like to encourage my students to do is to check after they've pressed. A lot of people skip that step. And I'm really what I'm looking for is I want to make sure that the intersection of my gingham is about a quarter inch away from the edge. And I also am checking to see if this is kind of square. It's much easier to correct a problem if you notice it early on rather than notice it at the end and try to figure out where you went awry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue piecing together the tablecloth in the same manner, each row, um, finding the center point to match here, um, and I'll continue on the same way, and I'll be back. All right, so through the magic of TV, we got our um, cake pieced. It doesn't look very exciting now, does it? So we have our cake and our tablecloth. Um, I've measured them and they, they each measure 18 and a half inches wide, so we're happy. Now we're going to sew the tablecloth to the cake. And I just wanted to bring to your attention that these points of the gingham all should line up roughly with the points of the seams. So it kind of gives you, um, it gives you a, a ballpark of um, where to pin and whatnot. And I just want to make double sure that my five inch rectangles are up here. So the, the larger rectangles are up here, the shorter one here. And so to pin, and usually I'm not a big pinner, but um, in this case, 
it, it helps just to, so I'm gonna find the point of the gingham and just sink a little pin. I'm not concerned that it's perfect. It is nice, however, when things line up as they should. You get that satisfaction with a accurately pieced. And I'll double check as I sew to make sure that my pieces are all lining up. Another trick when sewing this together is to sew it with the tablecloth on the top. And that way I can see the intersections of where my gingham is at a point. And I will try to sew right through the intersection so that I get nice clean points. So I've sewn, I've sewn the tablecloth to the background. And you know, for doing this not at home, um, the points are pretty good, so I'm gonna call it a win. Of course, my sister-in-law that's gonna get this, she won't, she won't care. If it were for the Queen of England, then I might have taken more time to make sure it's perfect. Okay, so here we go. There's our, there's our background. So I've got the tablecloth. The little checks line up with here and now this is like our um, blank palette so now let's talk a little bit about applique um, this has a few little flowers along the top and there's placement and all the um, the flower shapes on the inside you know if you wanted to do birthday candles I mean this is your masterpiece um, I'm sure that the sky is the limit Okay, so what I did in the pattern, they have the, the template for the cake stand. And what you do is you line up the dotted lines. And I simply laid the white denim fabric over the top and traced with a nice blue marker. And what I'm gonna do for this piece is I'm gonna trim about a quarter inch away from, it's like a shy quarter inch away from my, 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 my lines. Now, because I've done this before and I know, um, the eyelet lace will be sewn on after the fact. So I know that the top of my pedestal doesn't have to be a finished edge, which is nice. Okay, so I'm, so I thought I would show you two ways to applique today. Very briefly, I've done long, um, full classes on the topic for each one, but I thought I would just give you a general, and then you can choose whichever way of course, you could always do this by hand too if you're if you are into hand applique. So I have my now. What I want to do, and and this doesn't have to be exact. Um, this your pedestal doesn't have to be an exact size. What I would like to do is press under the seams so that the blue mark would not be showing on the front. And because there's a little curve here, you might find it helpful to put a little, a couple, few little clips along the curve. And I find that it's helpful to do, uh, a quick press first. And then if your, if your seam allowance doesn't stay put, then um, use some glue. But either way, okay, here we go. And it's really nice that I can see that blue line really 
um, it's pretty hard to miss. And that really does want to stay. Good. Okay. okay, so I'm just going to put a bead of glue just so that the seam behaves. Too bad you can't glue your kids so they'll behave too. Didn't work that way. So there's no really sharp points or anything on this piece. And then sometimes I find that if you hit it with the iron, it kind of helps the glue dry faster and keeps your seam in place. Now there's a couple ways to sew this down. Um, you can use the blanket stitch always, but because I'm taking the extra time to tuck under my, ed, my ed, edges, I think I'm gonna just use a straight stitch close to the seam. Um, and it gives it a nice finished look. I don't wanna hide the fact that I've taken the time to tuck under the edge, so. Okay. And for these little bunny ears so that they don't show through. And now it's just a matter of placing. You can always look at the picture. Um, but really the base is centered between these three bottom gingham squares. I'm just going to eyeball it. And then I will Take a couple of pins and then sew a straight stitch right along the edge. I use the inside of my um, uh, quarter inch foot to give me a guide. Okay, so notice that the inside of my toe, they call it the toe, is right there. So I'm just gonna, with a matching thread, Just sew this down. All right, so there we go. Pedestal is on. Yay. We're getting a cake. It's looking like a cake. Okay, so now we're going to take the lace, and I like to turn under the edges so that they're finished. And I'm going to make it so it's symmetric because why not? And then simply so you want your seam to be above the pedestal and so really you're just going to center this And just for grins, I will line up the edge of the lace with the bottom of the cake, sink a couple pins, and then I'll sew it down.
and I'm just giving it a press. You could even um, sew a stay stitch around the perimeter of the base if you like. But for now, for time constraints, I'll just keep it like this. Now the cake is ready to decorate. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you briefly how to applique the little uh, flower design up here or whatever you'd like to do. Um, I have steam a seam light paper and it's paper on two sides and then there's a sticky layer um, on the inside that helps affix your fabric to the background. What I did was follow the guide in the pattern and I traced the flower designs on the steam seam paper. I'm going to peel back the side, the back side of the paper, making sure that the glue is affixed to the um, part that I traced. And you stick this onto the back of your fabric. The nice thing is it's it, it'll stick without having to iron it, so it doesn't have to be permanent. You cut around the piece right on the line. This is raw edge applique. And it's important that you have a sticky layer in between so that when you're done with your um, project, the edges don't fray, which is the problem with raw edge. And also when you do raw edge applique, it's important to select a stitch on your machine that will cover the edge. And I'll show you. But I just traced out the, you're gonna do this to all of your applique pieces. And then if you're having a hard time getting the paper off the back, which sometimes happens, take a pen and score it. Then it comes off easy. And then here's a circle. Now, if you happen to have an AccuQuilt cutter at home, okay, this would be a good time to do it for circles. They're really hard to cut a perfect circle trace and cut a perfect circle. I don't care how good you did in kindergarten. It's still a really hard thing to do. So I'm just gonna do this really rough, uh, you know, a rough for time purposes. Okay, so there's the circle and then I'm gonna score the back. Didn't I just say this was easy? It is, okay. And again, the nice thing about this is it's sticky and it'll stay, but you don't have to. Um, so you would cut out all of your applique pieces, trace them onto the back of your paper, cut them out, and then you would place them onto your, onto your cake. And I will show you how to sew it down. When you're ready and you have everything set up the way that you want it, you can take an iron and just give it a little press. That'll make, that'll be permanent. That you won't be able to reposition it after you iron it. Okay, I'm gonna set up my machine for blanket stitch. Um, and I will I, uh, put on my applique foot, so I have an open toe here. I'm going to move my needle all the way over to the right. And I'm also going to select the straight stitch for a second. Bear with me and you'll see why. I'm going to move my needle all the way over to the right. 
and I'm going to shorten my stitch length to about a one, let's say. From now on, that straight stitch is my locking stitch. Oftentimes, if you just start with a blanket stitch, your um, the, the thread comes undone. And also, by moving your needle all the way over to the right, uh, you can use the inside of your toe right here as a guide. So what I'm going to do is take a couple of locking stitches, change to my blanket stitch, always trying to point to the center of the circle when I take my bite. And any time I pivot, I make sure I do so when the needle is sunk on the outside. So I make sure that it's pointing to the middle. And the nice thing is, you know, this is just my machine settings, but you can definitely adjust the length and width to whatever length and width you like. And again, you just go on and then you get the, the blanket stitch around and then I'll show you. Okay, so I'm gonna change it back to my straight stitch. And for this one, I think it would be good. Let me do my locking. I will change to, let's make it, I'll think of a little girl in a two, in a little ballerina tutu. So I'll go too wide and too long. And I like that better for the size. And really you're just gonna continue to go around I just want to show you how to handle this little point. Now, depending on what effect you like and how fussy you are, you can get your needle right to the point, the in, inverted point there. Point your foot to the center of your piece and then take one straight little stitch there. It's just a nice little finishing touch. And then you just carry on. When you get around to the end and you finish, you'll change back to the straight stitch and lock your stitches and then cut. Okay, here I am at the point. I'm gonna put my needle right in the point. And then go in the middle. And then carry on. And then and then you're good. Trim. After you've locked your stitches, you can trim them. And you're good to go. All right, so here's one that's been finished. Uh, I did the same technique uh, with stitching down around with the blanket stitch. Obviously, you put the um, the layers down underneath first, and then you'll want to make sure that there's a quarter inch of the petals behind the circle so that they don't fray. Um, I quilted this using wool batting, which really gave it the poof. So the applique really poofs out. And as a final, de a little finishing touch, I embroidered with call those back stitch or um, satin stitch really I just drew them on and just filled it in with the with the DMC floss and then quilt and you're all set well thank you so much for having me uh, this is really fun this is a great little project to kind of launch yourself into the quilting world it's manageable it's small it's challenging enough uh, to pique your interest, um, but it's not devastating if you make a blunder here or there. Um, and again, if you do, just cover it up with a flower, right? If life could be so easy. Um, the kits are great because everything you need is right there inside. You can even have a little taste of using Liberty fabric, um, just like a little, then you'll want to do more, trust me. Um, but. Again, this is really fun, and I'm sure everybody knows somebody 
that would love a little birthday surprise. Um, so I hope that you take the challenge and have fun with it and feel free to decorate it and give it your own style. Again, thanks.